The woman I love has gone to bed early, so I can be alone in the living room, alone in the manic universe of August, just me arranging and rearranging the books, like someone packing and repacking their parachute, only I'm not jumping. Only maybe the books are not what's saving me anymore. Maybe now is reruns of the Donna Reed show, or the Marx Brothers, or movies about people who are funny all the time. I keep watching the same rap video on YouTube about the stacks of money and what's going to happen. Outside, it has just begun to cool down so I can take a walk if I want. See if there's a moon somewhere above the movie theater. Some summer stars up there. Some planet to go with the grass I'll lie on next to the school. A big field where someone is asleep or passed out. Where a dog overcomes a dead bird. Just half a bird now but real in the cool, dark green, motionless at the foot of the chain link fence. If I were to go out and find that bird, I would want to sit down next to it and give it a name. I would want to gather up some sticks and make a house for it to live in while it's being dead. I would want to sit there all night and that's why I'm only going to open a window. Open all my windows. So if it wants to, it can come here and fall asleep in my lap. I'm sitting in the middle of the room with a blanket over my head and some letters I would like to write. Dear love, dear motherfucker, dear heart, dear space. I want to write, dear space. I can't seem to live the way I should without loneliness, without passing out. I keep wishing I knew more about supernovas, that I had some of your dark energy, your dark matter. I wonder if you're expanding or cooling or what it will look like when you turn your back toward your own beginning. What fire, what ice. What will you invent out there that Hollywood hasn't already encoded onto a disc, already built in a garage off sunset? But space will never write back. Neither will love or real motherfuckers. So I should just stand up, grab my shoes, walk to the field and sit down in the grass. I wouldn't be alone. A small breeze making her wings lift. Some starlight through a pine making her shimmer. Dr. Angle goes to the nudist colony and starts giving physicals mentally, laying each person back, asking probing questions in a calm, firm voice, politely yet seriously, so the patients will tell only truth. Are you experiencing any pain? When was your last period? The last time you had sex? How is your diet? How are your bowel movements? Are you exercising? Your numbers were a bit high the last time you were in, pressing on their stomachs, each expectant breast, each man a head turned left and coughing. And because he is on vacation, he can be mean. Compare body parts to sausage chipped ham and smelly cheese. And because he is on vacation, 
he can encourage the swelling inside, admit the thick honey center of himself once more than the transaction of rubber gloves on flesh, professional conversation and distance, which only leave him lonely and home each night whispering his patient's names as if they haven't left or might answer him over and over and over. Dr. Engel studies John Curran's paintings. For the most part, he enjoys them, though he can't stop the fan belt thought circling the lightly greased machinery of his mind. In an emergency, pantyhose can replace a fan belt until an Exxon can be found, or a BP, or a Chevron, or something small and unnamed if you happen to be driving through, say, West Virginia that a body couldn't look like this and survive. Misshapen, Kate Moss thin, breasts swollen and exaggerated like the heads of the baby mice Roger squashed in the garage when they were boys. Boys are Dr. Engel's favorite. At least the boys in the last painting on the last page of the book, boating somewhere bare-assed and happy, bare-assed and bragging about fish in their nets, between their legs, between them, shiny and wet and smelly, healthy. Dr. Engel passes a generically attractive couple on Avenue A and considers the way their bodies fit together like a jigsaw puzzle was the way the nurse described it to him in middle school. The middle of the man and the middle of the woman sliding together, sliding together, sliding together. Locked the way his father told him dogs lock. And you have to throw water on two dogs locked. Though nobody... Dr. Engel suspects, really knows if that's true. But more importantly, he hears the man say, I want to get away and sit by a body of water today, with the option of cooling off. And Dr. Engel resists the urge, like the urge to pee, to tell the man that his body is mostly water, is, in a sense, a body of water. 50 to 65 percent water in adults, 75 percent in children, and that the kidneys weigh approximately five ounces each, each of them, the man and the woman, having two, probably, and maybe explaining our need for love, for coupling, why everything happens in twos, except for tragedies, which mostly, everyone knows, happen in threes. Is Not Unusual by David Trinidad. My platinum blonde hair held in place by a paisley scarf as I speed down Route 66 in the pink convertible I won behind door number three. Footnote by David Trinidad. Nancy's question is aimed at her mean little heels. Are you Ready Boots. Share by Dorian Lux. I wanted to be share. Tall as a glass of iced tea. Her bony shoulders draped with a curtain of dark hair that plunged straight down the cut tips brushing her non-existent butt. I wanted to wear a lantern for a hat, a cabbage, a piñata, and walk in thigh-high boots with six-inch heels that buttoned up the back. 
I wanted her rouged cheekbones and her throaty panache, her voice of gravel and clover, the hokum of her clothes, black fishnet and pink pom-poms, frilled halter tops, fringed bells, and her thin strip of waist with a bullet hole navel. Share. Standing with her skinny arms slung around Sonny's thick neck. Posing in front of the Eiffel Tower. The leaning tower of Pisa. The great wall of China. The crumbling pyramids. Smiling for the camera with her crooked teeth. Hidden Miss Beauty. The sun bouncing off the bump on her nose. Give me back the old share. The gangly, imperfect girl. Before the shaving knife took her. Before they shoved pillows in her tits. Injected the lumpy gel into her lips. Take me back to the woman I wanted to be. Stalwart and silly. Smart as her lion tamer's whip. My body, a torch, stretched the length of the polished piano. Legs bent at the knee, hair cascading down over Sonny's blunt fingers as he pummeled the keys. Singing in a sloppy alto, the oldest, saddest songs. Smoke by Ron Paget. I'm going out for a pack of cigarettes. At one point in the history of our language, roughly from the 1920s into the early 1950s is my guess, those words meant simply goodbye forever. As the back screen door slams shut, he disappears across the darkness, never to be seen again, at least in Joplin. Those were the days when men were men, guys who looked straight into the eyes of the little wife or the crew boss and said, I'm going out for a pack of cigarettes. They left and they looked but they never did find that pack of cigarettes. Money Talks by Ray Armentrout. One, money is talking to itself again in this season's bondage and safari look, its close out camouflage. Hit the refresh button and this is what you get money pretending that its hands are tied. Two. On a billboard by the 880, money admonishes, shut up and play. 